A recent guest on Bloomberg Television right here on the show, weighing in on the unwinding of the yen funded carry trades, as of course you see the effects ripple across the markets. Let's get a little bit more context here. Bring in Marcus Live Executive Editor Mark Cudmore. Mark, how long is this going to last? I think we still have some more pain to come. I think that the acute part of the pain is behind us in terms of the short term carry trade, the weak handed carry trades, the day traders, the hedge funds, most of those being cleaned out. I still think there is a structural overhang of short yen positioning, and I think some of that will be squeezed over the coming weeks and months, but it won't be dramatic. The dramatic phase is behind us. And, and I think that we might have some more yen strength ahead, particularly because it seems that the dollar is turning, the dollar is more weakness, so therefore dollar yen lower causes some more squeezing of those positions. But fundamentally, the yen is not set up for sustainable appreciation. So after we clean out these, some of these positions, I think the yen can weaken on crosses, even if dollar yen comes a bit lower still to come. Mark, let's talk about what we're seeing with the US market, with global markets. A lot of people are now calling for a 50 basis point cut in September. And I'm trying to wonder about how that will be taken. Will that be taken as good news? Or will it be taken as bad news? I was talking to a bunch of people about this yesterday. Is 25 basis points from the Fed in September a signal that we're going to get a soft landing and it can be managed? Is a 50 basis point cut from the Fed in September a signal that the economy is deteriorating rapidly and markets should take fright? You know what? We're still five weeks away. And ultimately, the Fed will deliver what is priced by the market by then. So we'll all already have decided the narrative by then. We'll have decided, oh, no, we're panicking, and therefore we need a bigger rate cut. Or we'll have decided, oh, wait, the economy is not slowing too much, and therefore we'll get 25 basis points. The signal won't come from what the Fed does. Yeah, the Fed tweaks and guides the, the, the market at the margin. But ultimately, it's a, it's a market follower itself. Personally, where are we going to be going into that meeting five, six weeks away? So we've got a lot of data to come. Next week's end of, end of next week, got retail sales. We've got sealed CPI. I'll come into it. I think the hard landing fears are overdone. I am open-minded to it. I'm not completely complacent to the idea. But I think we're suddenly got very, very excited. And I just i am not seeing in Atlanta now GDP Fed data, in ISM data, in earnings, I am just not seeing this sudden panic in the U.S. economy. Sure, it's slowing. Sure, monetary policy is finally having an impact. And we knew it was going to happen with a lag. But is there a dramatic falling off a cliff yet? I'm not seeing it right now. Mm. And so I guess you disagree with some of the things we've heard from Bill Dudley then this morning, Mark, on that front. He's, of course, formerly a Fed president and talking about how we've got more volatility to come. Maybe you see that. But he's, of course, been suggesting we need to do the Fed needs to do something more quickly. Yeah, you're absolutely right. And I agree that we've got more volatility. I think August will stay volatile. I think we're in this uncertain period. But with all respect to Dudley, uh, I, I think that the, the Fed sudden, suddenly panic. It was only a couple of weeks ago that Dudley himself, by his own admission, was a hawk. And now suddenly we're panicking for 50 basis points. I don't buy it.